Leviticus 25 and 1. And the Most High spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land which I give you, then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Most High. So it's told, told us when we come into the land of the Most High, we are to keep a Sabbath unto the Most High. Verse 3. Three. Six years thou shalt sow thy field. Leviticus 25 and 3. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, meaning plant crops, and six years thou shalt pune thy vineyard and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Most High. So, we would grow our crops six years. And in the seventh year, the land, we're supposed to get a land rest. That's why when you look at uh, how the world is today, it's totally out of order. Why you, you can go, you can fly across America, you see all this, this land is just, it's uh, wasteland. You know what I mean? They can't do anything with it because... They have not followed the law of such commandments of the Most High. That's why it tells you in Isaiah 24 and 5. It says, The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. That's the ground, the earth, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. You see? So he gave us instructions. To go by that will work even the land. How the land will be prosperous. At least bringing forth the crops and so forth that we need, the fruit that we need to be able to survive on, you know, continually. Because you got to look at it for what it is. I mean, from the beginning, the most I told Adam. In Genesis, Genesis 3, 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened, listened, unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, which is the tree of knowledge, with knowledge of good and evil. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return into the ground. So you go back to the ground where you came from. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Mm. So that's why you're looking at that was the curse that was put upon, upon us. So now when you look at Isaiah 24. And five, or well, you see the the earth is defiled and the habits thereof. Huh. Now, if it's, if he gave it to, he gave us the whole the whole world was made for our sake. And you see what he told Adam. What do you think the uh, the Gentiles that sacrificed the idols or, or To other gods outside from the most high or powers outside from the most high, what you think they're gonna get? That's why he said the earth is really defiled. You know, he said we're gonna, said we're gonna have a hard time in trying to 
cultivate the land and so forth. Why? Because we broke his laws from the beginning. And he told us to go to 2nd Ezra 7. And verse 10 it says, 2nd Ezra 7 and 10 says, And I said, It is so, Most High. Then said he unto me, Even so also is Israel's portion. Because for their sakes I made the world. You hear that? He said he made the whole world for our sake. And when Adam transgressed my statues, then was decreed that now is done. When he, when he transgressed the most high's lost as commandments, which he had, then we had to continue to eat of the tree of good and evil and not live for one day, which is a thousand years to the most high. So this is what we've been subject to. Since Adam did what he did. So now going back to Leviticus 25. And I'm going to read. Continue. In verse 4 it says. But in the seventh year. As we didn't grow our crop six years. He said. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land. Even the most high gave the land rest like we supposed to be resting on the sabbath day ourselves right. you know from working you know laboring on the job it said but in the seventh year shall be a sabbath of rest unto the land a right. sabbath for the most high right. this for the most high so that's why i say when you look at what's for him it says for him right. the land let the land rest for him a sabbath for the most high a rest year for the most high Thou shalt neither sow thy field, plant any crops, nor prune thy vineyard, nor pick anything. It says, That which groweth of its own accord of thy harvest, thou shalt not reap. Whatever grows in that year, you're not supposed to pick it. Neither gather the grapes of thy vine undressed. For it is a year of rest unto the land. See, if they followed this, then the land wouldn't be defiled. Right. You see what I'm saying? Because he gives us the order of how to do things. And we can do that ourselves. Right. You see what I'm saying? He'll give us enough in that sixth year to last for that seventh year. Right. If we follow this order. We come back to it. We have land. Whoever have land. You plant crops. You shouldn't be planting crops every single year. That seventh year is a, is a Sabbath of the most high as we just said. For the land. Give the land a break. That's right. <laughs> you see, I'm give the land a break. Every seven years, you see? Verse 6. And the Sabbath of the land shall be meat for you, for thee, and for thy servant, and for thy maid, and for thy hired servant, and for thy strangers that journey with thee, and for thy cattle, and for the beasts that are in thy land. Shall all the increase thereof be meat. Verse 8. And thou shalt number seven Sabbaths of years unto thee. Seven times seven years. Which would be what? Forty-nine. And the space of the seven Sabbaths of years shall be unto thee forty and nine years. So count forty-nine years. Then... Shall thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement. This is the day of atonement. So when the day of atonement comes, we sound the trumpet. This is on the 50th year though. Sound throughout all your land. It's the, it's the year of jubilee. So we will sound this trumpet on the day of atonement, which is a, a day that the Most High allowed us to fast and pray. For the forgiveness of our sins. Once a year. And ye shall hallow. The 50th year. And proclaim liberty. Throughout all the land. And to all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you. And ye shall return. And ye shall return. Every man. Unto his possession. And ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall that fiftieth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, meaning we don't plant any crops, neither reap nor pick any crops. 
that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of thy vine undress. It's just like this seventh year that we gave the land rest on the day of atonement, this is what we done. On the day of atonement, the tenth day of the seventh month, we sounded the trumpet. It was a year of jubilee. And we, regardless of when it was, we still treated it as it was the seventh year in that same perspective. Verse 12, for it is the jubilee, it shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field. In the year of this jubilee, ye shall return every man unto his possession. Go back home. And if thou sell aught unto thy neighbor, or buy aught of thy neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. He said, if you're going to sell something to your brother, you ain't supposed to be oppressing your brother and charging a high rate in whatever it is that you're selling them. You see what I'm saying? Like they do in this kingdom. You know, if you, if you get something, that's why we have to look at this. You want to be blessed, then you don't want to, you want to do like Esau and use our people for commerce. Right. You know, okay, so it costs you $25 and you're charging $75, right. $100. When you can charge $50, you can charge $35. You can, you can make, then you look at how much more you will make right. in the long run than you would charging a lot and saying, why am I not receiving any profit? Because you done jacked the price up like Esau did. Right. Right. You done learned the way of the heathen. Right. Whereas you have something, you look at, okay, well, our people are in a certain condition. So why are you going to jack up the price so that they can't even afford it? And you look around, you're not even really making that much business. Because you done jacked your prices up so I don't even change it. I'm not changing. That's why that's why the most I saying. And you oppress somebody, they want, they they need this. They need something that you have and they can't afford it because you done jacked it all up. Yeah. The price all up. That's why it's, that's oppressing. Yeah. Think about it. You want something, you see something you really like and you want to get it, but your, your your funds are not there. And here they are charge you a lot of money for what it is that doesn't have to be that way, where you can look at everybody can have a lot in abundance, but they can't have it because the prices, that's what he's saying, that's oppression. That's what Esau did, that's why we call him Massa, the oppressor. I mean, not no master, but Massa in Hebrew, which means the oppressor. You see what I'm saying? That's what most I say, we ain't supposed to be like that. Supposed to be lords over our people, you know, treating them wrong. We already treated wrong. You treated wrong before you come to your brother for something. <laughs> you woke up this morning, you was treated wrong. <laughs> Just being in this wicked kingdom, you know what I mean? We got all these problems that we dealing with this way, that way, every way you can think of. Then you got to go to our brothers, and you got to be oppressed. Nah, man, that's not love, man. That's what he's, he's trying to show us how to love each other, love that neighbor as thyself. That's right. Verse fifteen to say according. To the number of years after the jubilee, thou shalt abide of thy neighbor. And according unto the number of the years of the fruits, he shall sell unto thee. According to the multitude of years, thou shalt increase the price thereof. And according to the fewness of years, thou shalt diminish the price of it. See? He giving us orders of how you can increase the price and how you can diminish the price. For according to the number of the years of the fruits that does he sell unto thee, ye shall not therefore oppress one another. See? It's a law. We ain't supposed to be oppressing one another. But right. thou shalt fear thy power. Oh, oh. Right. Yeah, there, there go that fear again. <laughs> you better be afraid of the most high, for I am the most high, your power. Right. You better be afraid of the most high. You better be scared of the most high. And don't think of this fear talking about something different than being afraid of him or being scared of him. This is real, y'all. That's why verse 14 says, And if thou sell out unto thy neighbor or buy out of thy neighbor's hand, ye shall not oppress one another. Who is this talking to? The children of Israel. We the children of Israel. Who the laws are given to. Verse 2, 
I'll read verse 1. And the most I spake unto Moses in the Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. It's talking to us. Twelve tribes of Israel, who we are. Con? Con. Verse 17. Ye shall not therefore oppress one another, but thou shalt fear them thy power. For I am the most high your power. And he's our power how long? Forever and ever and ever. Ain't no change in this. This just the way it is. It's like that. That's the way it is. How long? Forever. How long? Forever. How long? Forever. 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 That's right. Kind. That's right. Hello, y'all. Continuing. Verse 18. Wherefore ye shall do my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land in safety. See? That's why you wonder why we're in such a bad shape. Because we ain't keeping the Most High's Law of Church Commandments. Right. And now that we come back to the Most High's Law of Church Commandments, when the book is closed, now you have opportunity to dwell in the land in safety. For the angels, angels going to gonna surpass, going to compass those that fear the Most High. And the land shall yield her fruit. And ye shall eat your field, and dwell therein in safety. And if ye shall say, What shall we eat the seventh year? Behold, we shall not sow, nor gather in our increase. Then, listen, then I will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year. You see? Then will I, the Most High, he said, I will command my blessing Upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. <laughs> he said, "Gonna bring enough fruit for us to eat for three years, three years." Right. Yeah. Oh, no. oh three years, no, no. God. And you shall sow the eighth year, and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year, until her fruits come in. Ye shall eat of the old store. So he give us enough to last three years. Ain't going to make sure that it don't rot. Done. You understand what I'm saying? Done. Come on now. We get some fruit now. That fruit don't last a week. <laughs> we got wheat. We got fruit, fruit in the, uh, the uh, container right there, man. It's probably bad. It had water and ice in it. <laughs> it went bad in this kingdom, Con. Right. Right. He said he's going to give us fruit. And vegetables and so forth that's gonna last three years, ah, and we're gonna be able to God. eat of the fruit and vegetables that the most allow us to have ah. beyond our imagination. What we can think now, you see what I'm saying? For what? Following him, doing his law, such commandments. Ah. Verse 23: The land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. Come on, he said the land cannot be sold forever, for the land is the most highest, y'all. Ah. Not anyone's but the most highs. Look, get a second Ezra five. In twenty four. Second Ezra chapter five. Verse twenty four. And of all lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one pit. That's right. That's it. <laughs> That's what we're reading about. Once I said of all the lands of the world, he has chosen one pit. That one pit is where? The land of Israel. You hear what he said? And what he say? He said, uh, in verse 23, the land shall not be sold forever, for the land is mine. <laughs> he said, the land of Israel is his, for ye are strangers and sojourners with me. Say. And in all the land of your possession ye shall grant a redemption for the land. If thy brother be waxen poor, you have a poor brother, brother that's poor, and have sold away some of his possession, and if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem that which his brother sold. And if the man have none to redeem it, and himself be able to redeem it 
Then let him count the years of the sale thereof and restore the overplus unto the man to whom he sold it, that he may return unto his possession. See? Giving us orders. What is this? Moral laws. These are moral laws. And if a man sell up dwelling house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after it is sold. So if you sell your house, you can redeem it back within a year. Within a full year may he redeem it. You hear what say? If, and if a man sell a dwelling house in a walled city, then he may redeem it within a whole year after he, it is sold. Within a full year may he redeem it. Within that year. And if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year, then the house that is in the walled city shall be established forever to him that bought it throughout his generations. So he gave you a year to determine whether or not you really wanted to sell your home. So you better be better be aware if you go in there, that's the only place you have to go. <laughs> you better be have a, a, a plan B, right? <laughs> what if you come back and say, I want my house back? <laughs> Now what you what you gonna do then? Right. You see what I'm saying? So, wow, that's deep. Right. It shall not go out in the jubilee. It shall not go out in the jubilee. But the houses of the villages which have no wall around about them shall be counted as the fields of the country. They may be redeemed, and they shall go out in the jubilee, in the year of the jubilee. Notwithstanding the cities of the Levites. And the houses of the cities of their possession may the Levites redeem at any time. Levites were the, the priests. Remember, they didn't most didn't give them any lands. They were living amongst us. And wherever they were, they could redeem theirs at any time. And if a man purchased of the Levites, then the house that was sold and the city of his possession shall go out in the year of Jubilee. For the houses of the cities of the Levites are their possession among the children of Israel. See, you couldn't really do anything with the houses of the Levites because they were the, the priests of the Most High. There wasn't given any land and their house was, was sacred. I guess he allowed them to have their houses until, you know, you couldn't do anything until the year of Jubilee. But the field of the suburbs of their cities may not be sold. For it is their perpetual possession, Levi's possession, you know, outside of the city. And if thy brother be waxing poor and fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. Yeah, though he be a stranger, an Israelite that you don't even know, or a sojourner, someone that's journeying amongst your city that he may live with thee this is love allowing him to live with you take thou no usury of him don't cause don't don't charge him interest or increase but fear thy power that thy brother may live with thee meaning we're not supposed to be trying to overcharge our people in excess because they're living with you if they're poor, you know what I mean? Allow them to increase within their budget to be able to move on to their own. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury. You give him money, you say, okay, I'm going to give you $100, but you got to pay me back $150. <laughs> that's usury, that's interest. You know, like loan sharks. <laughs> you know, you get the money and they're going to charge you X amount of dollars more for the loan that you're getting. That's usury. That's interest. Thou shalt not give him thy money upon usury. Nor lend him thy victuals for increase. See. I am the most high your power. Which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. To give you the land of Canaan. And to be your power. See. And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee. Be waxing poor. He keep, he's letting you know. That's why when you look at a lot of how when the Mashiach came on the earth, 
even when the lady was anointing him with the oil from the alabaster box. The disciples said, what are you doing? We could have taken that and sold it for much and given it to the poor. That was the mindset. Can you see it here? What are you he saying over and over again? The poor. Your brother's waxing poor. Those that are poor. Those that have a need. This is what we've done. Especially the Essenes, a group of Israelites that the apostles and the Mashiach Galashai were a part of. They were, all, they were always concerned about the people. Like the Most High said, he loved Jacob, so we're supposed to be loving our people as ourselves. When you look at us, that's why he said, get a job so that you'll have money to take care of yourself and help someone else. That's what it's all about. You know, it's clear. We've seen it here in the law, and you're seeing it being fulfilled. And hey, Masha Gosha had to tell his pastor, look, man, she's putting this all on my body for my burial. You always had a poor. Like we here in 2016, still dealing with what? The poor. In abundance. And it's happening more and more and more. That people are becoming poor and poor. That's why we have each other to depend on to make sure that we're able to survive through each other. As a nation. And until we get that mindset and stop being individualist and thinking of ourselves without thinking of others, we're not going to see what this is all about. A lot of people are not going to make it because of that. Verse 39. And if thy brother that dwelleth by thee be waxing poor and be sold unto thee, thou shalt not compel him to serve as a bond servant. This is your brother. You know. He be sold unto you. Understand? Because we would actually become in what they call to the so-called white men call indigenous servants, but we would serve seven years, then you have a chance to be set free. So you can't compel them to be a bond servant, but as an hired servant, and as a sojourner, he shall be with thee, and shall serve thee unto the year of jubilee, which is what year? The seventh year. And then shall he depart from thee, then he can leave, both he and his children with him, and shall return unto his own family, and unto the possession of his fathers shall he return. See, a lot of times, you know, when we were waxing poor, sometimes the father would, you know, allow some of his children, or some, even though they had children, to go and be an indigenous servant. So you can understand what I'm saying. You know, servant, but they will serve for seven years then they can go free, even with his children. Verse 42, for they are my servants. You hear that? For they are my servants. They are the most high servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bond men. You can't sell them as slaves. That's a slave. You can't sell our brothers as slaves. So when they say we sold each other, that's a damn lie. This the law. We would be against that. So you can't sell our brothers as slaves. This is the law, which it says. Thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, but shall fear thy power. See, this, you understand. He said you can't rule over him with a, a strong hand, you know, treating them wrong, oppressing them, beating them, and doing the things that we, we, we receive in slavery. Here in America, from 1492 or even until now, this very day, killing us, and there's was the verdict not guilty and so forth. We in, we we still in captivity, whether you realize it or not. You know, most people don't realize that, but we still in captivity. Most I haven't redeemed us from. It. Ain't no man gonna save us. Only the Most High through a Mashiach that was shy through the 200 million angels he's sending back to this earth to redeem the 12 tribes of Israel, one third, mind you. It says, thou shalt not rule over him with rigor, with a, you know, treating him wrong, but shall fear thy power, both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids. So slave men, or I might say uh, indigenous servants to us and the men and the women, which thou shalt have, 
shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Okay, so wait a minute, we go back. <laughs> he, he said, but both thy bond men, which is the slave men, and bond maids, these ones that, women that are slaves to us, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. Let you know the heathen can be slave men and slave women, but not our brothers and sisters of Israel. Right. Of them shall ye buy bond men and bond maids. See? So how the most I love everybody. Right. Here he's telling you, straight up. These other nations outside of the 12 tribes of Israel can be slaves to us. Slave men and slave women. We can sell them to each other. Just letting you know. Once again, for those that's missing it, both thy bondmen, slave men, and bondmaids, slave women, which thou shalt have, that you know we had slave men and slave women, shall be of the heathen that are round about you. So the slave men and slave women shall be of the other nations, the Edomites. So-called Caucasian, the Arabs, Ishmaelites, you see the Ammonites, the Moabites, the, the uh, Elamites, the Hamites, all these other nations that's around about us, they can be our slave men and slave women. Of them shall you buy bondmen and bondmaids. You can sell them and we can buy them. That's why you look at all these things that already have happened. In the spirit, the elite of the Edomites know this. See what I'm saying? One of them said, ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. But they want to be something because we broke the laws of the Most High. But he still says they're nothing but be like a despital. Kind? Kind. That's what it says. So we can't change it. We didn't write it, did we? No, I didn't write that. But it's written. It is written. Let's read it because some people are going to say, oh, you're, you, you're coming foul. Okay, I'm coming foul, but I'm coming foul to you because you deny the word of the Most High. That's right. Second Ezra 6, 54. Second Ezra chapter 6, verse 54. Con. Af and after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures. He made Adam the power of all his creatures. Read. Of him come we all. So we all come from Adam. Either you come from Shem, Ham, or Japheth. With lineage, the lineage of Adam. Read. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Look, he, he separated us. Who he chose? He chose the children of Israel. Get Deuteronomy, hold that. Get Deuteronomy 6, uh, 7 and 6 to prove that. And the people whom we have chosen. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Con. Deuteron thou, hold up. Deuteronomy 1 and 1 says, For these be the words of the most, that, that the Most High spake unto Moses on this side of Jordan to the children of Israel. Con. Let me read it for you so I won't paraphrase it wrong. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 1. These be the words which Moses spoke, spoke unto the, all Israel on this side of Jordan. In the wilderness. In the wilderness. So this, these are the words that Moses spoke to all Israel on this side of Jordan. To the children of Israel. So the whole book of Deuteronomy is talking to we, the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art a holy people unto the Most High thy power. The Most High thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So that's the chosen right there. Right. He's telling you right there. So go back to uh, 2 Ezra 6 and 54. 2 Ezra chapter 6 verse 54. And after thee, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come we all, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. Right, so we know. He's right here. He's separating us from all the other people that was created on the earth. As his chosen. Twelve tribes of Israel. Read. Verse 55. All this have I spoken before thee. Mm -hmm. 
Almost high, because thou madest the world for our sake. So he made the whole world for our sake. He made the whole world for our sake. For our sake. You see? It's very important that you see this once again. We went over it once. Here we are again. Going over it again. He's speaking. He's, most I speak once, yea, twice. Man perceive it not. Here we are again. He's letting us know. He made the whole world for our sake. Read. Because thou madest the world for our sakes. He made the world for our sakes. Read. As for the other people. As for the other people. Read. Which also come from of Adam. Now he already called them heathens, but they could be bond men and bond bond women, slave men and slave women. Read. Thou hast said. Thou hast said that they are nothing. Thou hast said that they are nothing. Where did he say that at? Uh, Isaiah forty seventeen. He said this. So we're just repeating what was already said. Isaiah 40 and 17. God. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. Mm -hmm. All nations before him are as nothing. Right, so that's <laughs> that's where he said it at. So Ezra's repeating what the Most High said. What did he say? All nations before him are as nothing. You say all nations before him are as nothing. Now you uh -huh. people will say, well, that's talking about Israel too. No. Is that talking about Israel? Jump to verse 1. Uh -huh. Let's see if it's talking about Israel. Let's read what he said. Bring it. Book it right there. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 1. Come. Comfort ye. Comfort ye, my people. Comfort ye who? My people. You say, comfort ye. Comfort ye, my people. Who's the most high people? The children of Israel. God. Go ahead. Save your power. Says our power, man. God. Look, that's 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 the most high. That's most high say, comfort ye, comfort ye. Who? My people. That's right. God. Go ahead. Verse 17, all nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing. See, so he ain't going to be talking about comfort ye my people, <laughs> comfort to us, and then he's going to come back and tell us that we ain't nothing. <laughs> no, he's telling about the other nations. He said, read it again. All nations before him are as he nothing. He said, that's why Ezra's repeating what he said. God. Thou hast said. Thou hast said, thou hast said, where he said that? Right here. Read God. it again. Call it out. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 17. All nations before him are as nothing. Right. He say all nations before him are as nothing. Read. And they are counted to him less than nothing. And these nations are counted to him less than nothing. And what? And vanity. And vanity. Now I'll go back to the second Ezra 6 God. and 56. Second uh, Ezra chapter 6 verse 56. Let me, after he told us he made the whole world for our sakes, for the 12 tribes of Israel's sake, then he says this, read. As for the other people. As for the other people. Which also come of Adam. Which also come of Adam, read. Thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle. He even added more to it. He said, they are nothing but be like a the spittle. Uh -huh. Spit to come out of your mouth. Ugh. Me? And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And, a, and a, likened the abundance of them unto a drop of any liquid that can fall from a vessel. That's right. Isaiah 40 and 15. Uh -huh. That's what he's giving them. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 15. Now you tell me these precepts are not true. Read. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. There's, that's what he, Ezra is repeating. You see what I'm saying? As it is written. That's all we need. John. Now let's look at uh, going back to Leviticus. Let's continue because. It's all here, brothers and sisters. 
And when we go into uh, Leviticus 25, we're going to 